I'll tell you, folks, this next gentleman comes from Brooklyn, okay? All right. And I guess the best way to describe him is to say he's the typical boy next door. <laughs> say hello to Andrew Dice Clay, okay? Here we go. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Madison Square fucking got him. How are ya? Korean delis, Indian newsstands, Greek diners, and ass fucking parties every night of the week. That's New York. I'm over here, man. I'm over here, man. I'm over here now. Just like I promised you. It's not a podcast. It's a dice cast. It's different than podcasts because we are the first actual transistor radio television talk show reality show that's who we are we're not trying to be anybody else i don't want to be anybody else as a matter of fact most people bore me to fucking tears this is not the kind of show that we're just going to be sitting here like I, as a matter of fact i'm going to make a big change right now you know why aren't you using the camera why isn't that camera on oh, I got it. no why isn't it on you see that's the kind of show I do. I demand certain things. Why is this messed up? Our sound engineer, Patrick, which I'll find a better name for him in the long run, he already fucked up by not having the camera. Why isn't it turned sideways a little? See, that's what makes our show. Di you know what's going to start the show just to make it different? Here, look. I don't believe in fucking headphones. I look like an asshole when I'm wearing the headphones because then people, as Patrick is filming right now, can't see the haircut, which happens to be perfect. Another thing that other people that have their own transistor radio shows don't do. They don't really care about what's in their hair, the kind of spray they use, the kind of gel they use. These are all things that I think out perfectly before here look at the gloves anybody else wearing these other than my buddy big j okerson who has the right to wear these gloves it's a tribute when he wears these gloves but this is our first show which turn the camera the other way now there we go say let's to make this the first reality dice cast ever we do things different right patrick oh yeah yeah you're allowed to answer me it's okay and i have an incredible cast with me today. I figured if I'm going to do this, let me start out with what I call the family show. So as you can see right to my, what are you laughing about? It's nice. And what are you doing with your hair ready? The I, nervous it, twitch. Yes, I have a nervous twitch, we but have, he's filming. I forgot. We have so. Eleanor Kerrigan with us. God. Oh, you get dressed up to perform every Hi. night. I'm dressed nice. What are you wearing under the sweatshirt? Show it's people cold something. in here. What do you want them exactly. to say? Exactly. Here you go. You happy? Kerrigan, right here. The greatest female stand up oh, in the you. country right now. <laughs> Stop with the old thank yous. I, I've said it before. Yeah, but you're being polite. Why can't I? No, thank you. What I'm, I'm trying to introduce you to the world. Okay. okay? Hey, world. Okay. <laughs> but you do. You look very pretty. Thank but you. I like when we see a little. You're the only girl in the room, so we want a little little bit of sex appeal if you can do that for the oh people. I, I thought you were taking all the sex appeal well i take a lot of it for the women hey. you know what i mean you know what i'm saying but even oh with my the god she looks cute thank you she's got the hoop earrings on should i take my Remember? shirt off it's up to you well but, I just... you know eleanor works out constantly she actually does can i say your pre-show what you do pre-show yeah sure I, I if you don't want me to give no, that up I no don't. that's fine i do but she does she does something, <laughs> you know, before every show. She's uh -huh. not my opening act for no reason. Hey, hey, wh I, I what? Know, I know she can't do it in here in front of the cameras. What are you talking about? You know, but we'll do it another time. How does that sound? Yeah, let's do it another time. But I time. am so excited to have her here. She left her busy schedule <laughs> to uh, to be here. <laughs> I did. You know, and, I cut um, it short doing the stairs today. You did the stairs. How many times did you do the stairs? Today, only 10. But then I sprinted in between. People, you don't understand what the Santa Monica stairs could do to a person. <laughs> you know, you, you don't walk for a week. I go up at one time and, and I have a rented hospital room at Cedar Sinai <laughs> to recuperate from one time going up those stairs. She does a 10 
12 times the other day. Mm -hmm. She's constantly working out to try to get rid of this belly. Yeah. You know, problem that she can. But look at her. Top physical condition. She's made out of glass and steel and some high-grade plastics. (laughs) She has, um, well, she's not a real listener. Excuse me? Are you? These aren't plastic. And uh, wait, I'm a listener. I listen. What, what are you talking about? Pl- Why are you pointing? Well, because you said already? plastic. My children are on the show. Let me introduce. Look how cute they are. I want to introduce my, my children right off the bat. This is Dylan <laughs> and this is Max. Both belong to me in a certain <laughs> what, way. What is uh, that? No, they're, they're my, my kids. Yeah, they're, I know. You know. They uh they're here today to support me. We'll talk about a lot of things. Uh say hello to the camera, Dylan. Congratulations. Oh Aww. thank you. Thank you. See, this is the first episode. Good kid. See they're very nice. They they're completely nice people. Max, you wanna you wanna say something? I'm over here now. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's over, We're over here, here now. now. <laughs> He's over here now. He he might How be you doing? Yeah, he might be a little uh you know, daytime, but <laughs> oh. I don't know. I can't tell sometimes with him. I know what you're saying, but I'm not. Oh, you're not? Not yet? You're up nearly <laughs> not an yet. hour. No. You know, not the, yet. People don't, the people do not understand what time we go to sleep and what time we get up. <laughs> like, it was a stretch even getting here Max today. came in my room today, and he was in a panic. He's like, if you don't get out of bed now, you're not coming today. <laughs> because it was 2.30 in the afternoon. He yeah. told me. I asked him if he wanted to go with me to come do this thing. And he's saying to me, he goes, I got to make Dylan move. Yeah. And I'm like, well, where's Dylan? He goes, he's sleeping. Oh. I go, it's 2.30. I you just know? needed a little more time. No, I understand. Nobody understands more than me. That's the thing about being like a showbiz family. You know, the hours, like our our home is almost like an after hours club. And so, yeah, I mean, we don't even start really smoking till about... Midnight, one. Sometimes me and Max are up so late, we have to do something called a switch. Oh. And what's that? It's where you decide not to go to bed because you're up so late, and you just stay up for the whole rest of the next day, and you do a switch so that the next time you wake up, it could be early. See, that, that is the beauty. Shut up. Uh, you're hey. talking to my children. Shut your mouth. You shut up. You shut up. I'm listening and responding, no, that's all. Saying, I didn't mean to come off in a negative way to you, really. No, but all I'm saying is that now I forgot what I was saying because you were- The switch. How in, That's insane. Do you think that- Could you, could oh, you do I, that? No, no. When I was younger, I could do, you know, three and four days at a clip. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. Staying up, you mean. Yeah, I just would stay up. Because I'd be so excited about, like, let's say the set I did at the comedy store- mm-hmm. You know, and I dragged some chick up that I met in the audience. Okay. And, you know, this is way before, you know, they came out with, you know, me two, me oh. and a half, me three, whatever it is. You know, when girls actually liked coming up to, to the house I lived in, which I'll, I'll talk about, which was Crest Hill, where I lived with, you know, five other comedians, you know, and after the set, I'd be so excited I'd have to find a girl that I could basically just bang into for a few hours and listen to Elvis music, you know, and, you know, it was all congenial, you know, (laughs) you know, because they all come on TV today going, oh, it wasn't congenial and they'd leave all upset. You know, I have a I have a theory about me, too, uh, which I call me in between, you know, you know, which is I think Asians came up with that. Me in between. What? You've heard of that, right? No. No. Okay. You've been down this road. In between? Yeah. And then I want to talk to Uncle Lee. Yeah. (gasps) No, no. No, I'm saying women. Yeah, sure. Okay. So you meet a girl. Wherever. Okay. Right. Um, When you first with a girl, they normally like to get you back to their place. They feel safe. It's their home, their surroundings. So if they don't want you there, they could tell you, you know, I got to get up early for work, the bullshit. Yeah. And you leave, you know. But so now me in between is, okay, things are going good with the girl. Excuse me for a moment. I'm going to do this for the people. A lot of people never get to see me drink coffee. What are you drinking? Oh, boy. It's a nice mocha. Yeah. Wow. With the the cold brew whipped cream. 
which in my opinion doesn't really exist, you know, because how do they get coffee and whipped cream? It can't happen. But let them say it. Let them be happy. They're the barista. Oh, my God. That's how I feel about it. And I did steal a handful of straws. The straw, nice. the straw business is going to build. So anyway, so me in between. So now if the girl's comfortable, you know, let's say she's a little lick it up. You're wearing your software and you're with the girl. What? You start kissing her. All of a sudden, the software goes hardware. <laughs> Get it? From software to hardware. <laughs> You know, this is how I would operate. And and not with the best looking girls either. Oh. You know, I once walked around uh, uh, Cantor's Deli with, I don't even know what she was. You know, <laughs> I mean, she was fucked up in a lot of ways, like physically. <laughs> you know, that was even, she even had like, like one foot was higher than the other. So it was like this little cute little cripple thing going on. Oh my God. Which turned me on. Jeez. And so what happened is, we're laying down on her couch, and uh, just just to note this, Jimmy Schubert was with me that night. Oh, okay. I thought you wanted and, me to write and it. And he, like, couldn't believe that I was walking around Panthers with this buffalo, basically, going like it's the love of your life. He just didn't understand. To this day, he doesn't understand that. <laughs> but I saw something in her. I'm not, I'm not you know, like the girl's got to be a 10. Right. You yeah. like a little off. You like a little well, bit this off. This was a little more than just a little off. Okay. And uh, so I <laughs> get back balance. to the place and we wind up on the floor with the, her front door open. Okay. Wow. Her, to her apartment <laughs> off of Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard. I never even told you this story. It's, it's, it's sort of a nice story because it's a little loving. Wait. And um, so when we're on the floor... You know, my hand starts going up the thigh a little, you know, and this is what me in between means is when you do that to a girl, the girl will normally put her hand on your forearm and she might say something like, I don't know if we should do this right now. <laughs> now, depending on the pressure of her hand on the arm, you have to make a stunt of how Max is paying attention. Because it's the greatest fucking look I've ever seen. I hope his edible no, is kicking no, but in. Listen, My Max, goodness. I'm not even telling you. So, you know, like when a girl puts her arm there, like let's say her arm, you know, is between one and ten. Like the pressure is like at a two or a three. It means, all right, she's trying to do the right thing, going by the morals that her mother might have instilled in her oh when God. she was a young girl going, don't let every guy just finger bang you and bang you. They won't come back. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. You know, so if you feel the pressure at two or three, that means, all right, just knock a hand out of the way. She really wants you to do it. And then she'll like go with the program. All right. Now let's say she puts both hands on your forearm, you know, and you really feel in pressure. It's like an eight. An eight and a half, a nine. That's, you that's, know what I mean? So you don't go further if you're any kind of gentleman. Right. But see, with the arm and the hand on the arm, that's a me in between <laughs> because it's a judgment call. So what makes me mad is when all of a sudden a girl that might have been doing the pressure at a two or a two and a half comes forward 45 years later and goes, he me too'd me. When he really didn't, because of the pressure. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I can't like, wait. Like, you remember? I'm sorry? No, like, when this we This sounds were, like, like a really bad after-school special. What, it's, say it again. So No, like, when we started Oh, you're saying you and me. Yeah. I don't remember the arm pressure. No, no. You know what was a giveaway with you? What? The the little shorts that night. with what the shorts? The, with the Robin I'm Williams sorry, movie yes. on. I don't... You're going to have to refresh my memory. I blocked a lot of it. I got my kids here. I'm not I know, and it's terrifying. I mean, you're talking you about short shorts and I Robin wasn't Williams. I was prepared, fellas. I'm sorry, guys. I was just going over there. She she loved this movie. That, oh, uh, Goodwill Matt Hunting. Deman yeah. And Matt Robin Williams. <laughs> What's his name? Matt Demand. No, Matt Damon. That Damon <laughs> and Robin Williams, yeah. which Robin was phenomenal in this movie. And I was looking forward because she'd watch it every night. 
He leaves out the reason I'd watch it. So the first bunch of times she snuck me in her room, you know, nothing would go on. We'd watch that movie. So I'm looking forward to the movie, and all of a sudden she comes in. She goes, I just want to change. You know, they give you the I just want to change with the little booty shorts on. I'm just like, you know, at that moment, you go, I got no choice, really. That's not true, boys. I want you to know that. No, I'm not saying anything terrible went on, you know. I'm just Why saying you your say roommate. That in front of them. Yes, no, my roommate was sleeping. Yes. I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm very real. This show is where the shit gets real. I'm very excited about right, it. Can we talk to Uncle Can Lee? you please introduce of Uncle Lee? About filthy little thing? Why? You brought it up, All not I'm me. What I'm saying is, I wind up with Fatso on the living room floor, this side of fucking beef that I was nice oh enough to climb God. on top of, okay? But we forgot to close the door to the apartment, and all of a sudden, there's people watching your father's ass bounce up and down like a spool beam. This is so amazing. And, and, you know, my my nuts are like playing speed bag against their ass cheeks. And then I just ran out because I realized, you know, I left my friends at Cantor's. It was wrong. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not a guy that ditches his friends. Anyway, Uncle Lee, let's talk to you. Hi, Lee. Hi. You understand, because Uncle Lee, fellas, which you do know uh, the way we met, uh, I will say he's not a blood uncle. He's extended uncle. Extended. I, c- I consider Lee family. An uncle no, nonetheless. I, that's why I call him Uncle Lee. Yeah. But because of the story we've got to tell, i got to at least say he's not a blood uncle. Okay. Exactly. But I do want but, to no, tell. No, can I say something? Certainly. You're closer to me. Than any fucking blood uncle in my family. I'll tell you that right now. Because it's a choice. You choose for me to be family. That's right. It wasn't automatic. And secondly, I want to tell you something, if you don't mind, before you even say that. I'm sitting here listening to this story. I'm not going to lie. I think I'm getting an erection. Oh. (laughs) No, I I mean that. Amazingly. Don't tell stories like that around me, especially at this stage of my life. Okay. It's called a me three. Yes. That's called a me three. Yeah. That's right. See, it's, it's, a, it's called an amen. It's called the think of me when you're doing these things. <laughs> no, but the, the thing is, you know, I want people to know that we met how many years ago? 43 years ago. 43 wow. years ago. Tell them where we were. Where well, we were. it's such, such a strange. This is Uncle Lee Lawrence. Uncle Lee Lawrence. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And, so and as I said, how strange, how strange life is. I had a show. I used to work in the Catskill Mountains, and I had a show I was looking so forward to, and the agent called and said, Lee, listen, don't be disappointed. And I said, don't disappoint me. He said, but I, <laughs> stop, I'm being serious. <laughs> so, so, so he said, the show that you had, we, we had a change. And I said, what, what kind of change? He said, they wanted someone else. They promised him, and that was the thing. Okay, so here, here's the story. I'm disappointed. I honestly felt like crying. I'm telling you the truth. And they said, but to make up for it, we have a hotel, another hotel. And, and, and they'll love you there. And I said, but what happened to the first one? You're disappointing me. Don't be disappointed. We have another show for you, okay? Next week we'll do it. And I'm telling you the truth. I was so angry. I hate to use the word. I was very pissed off, okay? Next thing I know, I come to this little hotel. And I walk in and in those places, you did a show in a little tiny cabaret and they make an announcement. OK, uh, Lee Lawrence is here. The band come in for a rehearsal and I'm waiting and I figure three giant musicians will come in. And there they are. There they are. One old man with a saxophone mm-hmm. and two. I'm telling the truth. And two young guys. I swear to God, I wondered how the hell did they get up here? Because you got to understand, you got to tell them how old the people were that stayed at the hotel. Oh, my God. You had to be at least 65 years old. Forget 65. I tripped three times over the walkers. Wow. Lee, <laughs> me. Lee, I was sitting with a guy on the front porch one time. I'm not yes. even kidding. Okay. A, a great guy. He's, he's, he was in the main house. So he slept right outside. There was a room right outside that he stayed in. Mm-hmm. And as I'm talking to the guy, he goes, you know what, Andrew? I have to make a, a little phone call. 
And I'm going, why is everything? He goes, well, I'm having a little heart attack, so I just want to get the ambulance going. Oh, my God. Going. Oh, my God. That, that, the true story, but continue. Oh, my God. But anyway, I walk in, and here's the band coming in, and I said, two young guys who, I swear to God, thought they should have been back in junior high school. And they walk in, and I said, hi, and they said, give us your music. Uh, okay, I said, do you read? And I gave my sheet music to this drummer, and he looked up, and he said, do I read? What the fuck? You think I'm illiterate? Oh, I was pertaining to the music, not if he just <laughs> reads. <and all. laughs> I was no, afraid. no, but I don't really, I don't really read charts. I don't believe in the doesn't chart matter, system. Because I'll tell you why it doesn't matter. It was probably one of the best shows I ever had. Probably three of the best musicians I ever had. Aww. That I was, I was in shock. And he knows the piano player Lee. Lee um, Musica. Lee oh, Musica, yeah. What the a greatest. talent. Wow. What a the talent. Greatest. So I said to him, excuse me, I hate to trouble you. Do you know uh, uh, th this song? And I just wondered, it was called Runaway. And the reason I wanted to do Runaway, believe it or not, as it turned out later, Andrew, of course, was in that show Crime Story. And the theme was, remember? I'm a walking in the rain. Anyway, uh, I asked yeah. him. I said, oh, all the great songs Lee, do you know how to play it? He said, do I know how to play it? Oh, my God, he played it. I couldn't believe it. I said, how do you do all this? But anyway, after the show, let me just say this. I usually change. I change. I take a little makeup off. Now a lot of makeup. But I take the makeup <laughs> off, seriously. And as I walked by, I saw this young drummer, and he was staring at me. And he said, you know, by the way, Lee, I don't only play drums. Oh, I said, really? What else you do? He says, I, I do comedy. Oh, I said, good, good for you. He says, wait a minute. How about the impressions I do? Well, I said, that's fantastic. Did you ever see me dance? I was getting so tired, all this fucking talent. And you here I am. I was only 17 at the 17, time. I wasn't even oh 18 my years God. old. Not 18. Up in the Catskill Mountains, it was unreal. That's, anyway, yeah. I am so happy to say that I am the kind of personality and entertainer. Personality, you mean you're kind of got personality. Wait, who never brushed anybody. And instead of saying, all right, you know, kid, I'm busy. I think I even had another show. No, you did take the time. I listened to him and I said to him, wow, I believe that you're very talented. You, you'll, you'll make it. And I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm married 59 years Miles with three time. children. God bless you. Wow. Three children. And I can only say I'm the straightest guy in the world. But he was looking at me with these blue eyes. <laughs> and no, I swear to God, I made a promise of I change it anyway that's the man for me <laughs> oh boy he, no no hey, i told Just, you you got all the sex appeal not only beautiful eyes the balls the chutzpah Whoa. to stop and entertain to start giving me his his itinerary who gives a <laughs> shit I'm like, I'm, no i wanted to do a show and get out of there and yet i listened to him and then i do have to say the following year did not play this resort he did and then i met him at king's plaza in brooklyn and he said, are you right coming before you were coming out to L.A.? That's, That's where right. we, we ran. He said, are you show. coming to the hotel? And I said, Andrew, 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 <laughs> I, no, I have to follow my dream. My dream was to be an actor. And I thought I would come out here and I would become a superstar. And as you can see, you see what happened. Yeah, but it's a, I'm, I'm on the podcast. But, 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 <laughs> but, but, but you want to know what's so great. Oh, okay. yeah, see, I didn't come out there that year. A couple of years later, I came out here. And uh, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm in this drugstore diner that they call Schwab's, okay? And it's where they found Lana Turner, who was this great movie starlet, you know, in what, what like the 50s when they found Lana Turner? Of course. Big superstar. Super. That's what Schwab's was known for, this drugstore. Wow. And it had a little cafeteria, all the entertainers hung you, out. You know and, where it was? It was right where, uh, you know, where you come over Laurel, where they where had... crunches and all? Where? Crunch, where crunch, 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 yeah. crunch yeah. was just yeah. this, this... They had Sam Ash, remember yeah, but, music? But there was stuff. nothing there. It was just this single-standing drugstore diner. And, you know, I'd go in there every day and I would sit. I'd actually get to sit with Shelly Winters Absolutely. and Chuck McCann. All there. And they'd give advice. But one day, which was more thrilling than even them, <laughs> I'm not even kidding, when I see him, like, getting some deodorant or something in an aisle. <laughs> and now I'm about, uh, what, 22, 23? Yep. That's all you And are. I tap oh. him and I go, Lee. And, uh, and it's me, you know, and, and we just start hanging out. But and I, and I may was, I tell them what you did? What? 
why yeah. I knew he'd be a superstar. There's a word called chutzpah, which means balls. You know, you're not afraid yeah. of anything. After seeing him, what's going on, this and that, he said, Leah, Le uh, can I talk to you? I was sitting down having breakfast. I said, what? <laughs> let, let me talk to you. And I walk away from the table. He says, Lee, can, you want to do something for me? I said, if I can, Andrew, of course. Okay, listen. I went for a major... No, 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 no. Let me set it up for oh, you. Then, oh, please. boy. Yeah, you, you do. For a minute. Okay. If, they, if you want them to understand the story, I don't want to have an argument over this. <laughs> no argument. You know, you're the oh, one I'm calling, like I said, that I love. So why are you going to argue no, with the only uncle you love? You just no. It's let not about an argument. But if they don't know the setup, and when are you going to learn when not to talk? Well, I was excited to hear the story, and Listen, then I have no problem with you. You're a, you're a sweet girl. Thank you. You know, the point is, <laughs> people tuning in to my reality show are not going to understand unless I set it up. So anyway, okay. I get Lee on the side now. I was upset. Because I just went out and auditioned for the sequel to Grease. And as you know, back then, my whole act was about being like Travolta and singing and dancing like Travolta, doing Grease. I would change from Jerry Lewis's Nutty Professor into John Travolta from Grease. And I'd get standing ovations in the clubs. So anyway, I go for an audition. It just didn't go right. You know, they, they sort of had to have me removed. <laughs> because you know the, you, you know like Dylan when you go up for auditions, yeah, you know, and they just shoo you away, yeah. So that's what this casting woman was doing. I go, no, you don't understand. Like I didn't even get to do my thing, really. Yeah. And she's going, no, thank you. And I'm going, don't thank me, because you, you're not gonna. You'll thank me when you could see what I could. And she goes, you need to leave. And all of a sudden, she picks up the phone. Uh, can you come in here? And here comes this guy going. Okay, we got a lot of people auditioning. You know, so I, I left. So now I see Uncle Lee, and I say, look, you know, you, you got to get me back in, you know, to to audition again for, you know, like the Danny Zuko of the next Grease. And he's going, Andrew, I'm, I'm, I'm not an agent. I go, yeah, but you can make believe you're an agent, okay? That's what I need you to do. Just make believe you're my agent and call this fucking lady and talk some <laughs> sense into her. So go ahead. So what happens? Anyway, I on said, the pay phones wait, in the back of there were little pay phones. <laughs> and I, I said, I really don't want to do this. I'm looking for a career for me. He said, no, don't worry about you. No, no, listen. This, no. I'm looking for he, he said, this is a big move for me. And I know you can do it because you're the greatest salesman. And of course, he sold me. And here I am. Yeah, I am a pretty good salesman. Anyway, make a long story short. We go in a phone booth. He comes in with me. There's room only for one. Yeah. And he's in a phone booth. You know. It was a little. And he's crushing me. 120 crushing degrees me. in the And booth. he said, okay, call her, call her. Name oh was Sally. God. I won't Sally. give last. Should I give the last Who name? Cares? Sally Dennison. We didn't do nothing bad to her. I didn't bring, I didn't mean, you know, anything up. Anyway, he gives me the number. Call, the call. I said, I don't feel right doing this. You don't worry about feeling right. Do it. I'm right for the part, and I know you could do it. And he put pressure and on I'm me. And I'm just going, to get me in there. He just put pressure on me. So I called, and... Uh, I'm not even 22 years old. <laughs> But I, that's why I'm saying the ball, Stephen, ask somebody to do this for you. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. He's looking yeah. for his own ball. So, so I, I can't go up, this watch. Guy. I said, hi, uh, Sally Dennison. So who's calling? I said, yes, it's uh, Lee Lawrence. She says, yeah, what is it about? This I is said, real it, it's, it's about speaking to Sally Dennison. She says, <gasps> no, but I mean, can I ask why are you calling? Yes. To speak to Sally Dennison. Oh, my <laughs> so, God. No, no. So hold on. Perfect. And sure enough, hello, with this abrupt thing. And I said, Sally, it's Lee. Yeah. And she says, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Lee who? Lee, La Sally, please. Lee Lawrence says, yeah. Uh, yeah, she makes like she remembers him now. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. after that, she said to him, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a shame to say, who the hell is Lee Lawrence? So I said, what is it? I said, I'll tell you what it is, Sally. Let me make it quick to you, okay? Uh, I represent a young man who was in to see you. Uh, from what he told me, and I understand he just got off a plane. It was not the right time to come in to see you. He was completely whacked out. And all of a sudden, I guess you didn't care for him. Wh who are we talking about? I said, Andrew. I said, yeah, uh, I think we did see him. Yes, yes, but you made one mistake. You let him go. You you did not see. Listen to me, Sally. Did I ever lie to you before? Of course not. I never spoke to her. She <laughs> says, no. She says, no. I said, this is the man for it. I am telling you. 
a feather will be put in your cap when you cast this guy. I, I want you to see. He starts in. He goes, did you know? Because I'm standing with him. <laughs> did you know that Andrew has been doing comedy for, what was it, like three years at the time? Yes. For three years? And she's like, well, no, I, I didn't know that. And he starts naming all my talents. Go ahead. You tell him. But it, I did. And I said, I'm just going to say this. You did not see the real Andrew. If you did, number one, he'd be shooting the film tomorrow. Okay? So I'm asking you as a favor to me. Please see him again. He says, yeah, but once we see them and we write it down, what does that mean? I said, do yourself a favor, not me. See Andrew. You must see him. She says, well, Jesus. And then he starts in again with the talents. With What's the, the difference? Did I you said, know he can sing? <laughs> did you know sing, he can sing? How dance? about he's plays drums he's a dancer if you heard his a impressions dancer. you wouldn't believe this but anyway do me a favor see him and i couldn't believe it myself she says well thursday at two i said i couldn't Sally. believe it i couldn't even max it Wait, was like ridiculous but you know wow. what's funny wow. in this phone booth there's not room for one the tour he's crushing me <laughs> and he's standing right next to me and i'm talking to him i, I didn't want him that close i'm telling him, get the fuck out of the phone booth let me talk <laughs> anyway make a long story short the greatest thrill I ever had, feather in my cap, Thursday at two, yeah. we'll see him. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. But it just shows you, I wasn't an agent. I'm not getting a commission. I was only concerned, please, with Lee Lawrence, <laughs> but yet I did it for him. Yeah. Who's, you know who who's the salesman? The... Who's the salesman okay. now? But you know, you know who wound up getting the part? The guy that uh, wound yeah, up on T.J. Hooker? Yeah, Matt. No, the no, other no, one, the blonde guy. They went like blonde a guy married, they went with married a to guy. the girl. Whose like father in this was day and a... age, you would have been right though. That that's yeah. how they oh, went. Oh yeah, they went. He with was that... going out with uh, the one that played nanny, one of the nannies. Yeah, yeah. The whole her whole not family, not the dark haired nanny, no. not her. Her whole family was very great actors and actresses, yeah. and she was well known. Anyway, believe it or not, the husband. But this is they the kind of shit you got to do in Hollywood to make it. Yeah, you know. Let me let me tell you something. When when. I was at the comedy store and I started really getting my chops together when I, when I broke away from the impressions and I started, you know, dicing it up on stage, yeah. you know. So Mitzi, the owner of the comedy store, you know, you know, she'd start putting me on like one thirty in the morning, like me and Sam Kennison were like the last two acts of the night every night. Yeah. And there's nobody there because I'd show up at nine o'clock, which, you know, Max, you've been there a thousand times to a packed house. And you're hoping huh. somebody falls out, but it never happens. And you're watching the audience dwindle away. And then I'm doing my act to a guy in the front row <laughs> who's out cold, snoring. <laughs> but I didn't care because I, I just had blinders on and actually just knew what I was going to become in the world. There was like zero doubt as to where I was going. How When comics, that's why a lot of the comics from that generation were against me because... You know, when they would ask me, like, how far you think this dice thing's going to go? I go, I'm going to be the biggest comic in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, there was no, it was no shock when I even got, like, I just knew. I, I'll, I'll tell it to you this way. I knew I'm either not going anywhere or I'm just going to be the biggest comic that ever was. And I became the biggest comic that ever was. But it took years of just going on and, and you know, talking to nobody in the room <laughs> And learning to do my act to basically silence that I used to have a joke on stage that I go, you know, what's great about this. In a couple of years, people are going to want to come to Vegas, see me at Caesar's Palace and go, let's go see Andrew Dice Clay. We'll have a nice, quiet evening because there's no laughs in the room. You know? But what I started doing, because I got pissed off at the owner, I started going to movie theaters before the movie would start. And I would walk to the front of the theater. I'd bring a boom box with me. I'd pay the sound guy off. I did like the Chinese. Like I got credits in movie theaters. <laughs> I would do all the theaters in Westwood where they were playing Prizzy's Honor. I would hit that every night. Uh. Then I would hit the, the very last one I did was uh, the movie Year of the Dragon that Mickey Rourke was starring in at the Chinese Man Theater, which holds, holds thousands of people. And I give the sound guy 10 bucks to shut the music before the movie. And I go walking to the front of the theater wow. with um, Yako Smirnov dressed in a tuxedo, walking me up like, like, you know, like people are waiting for me, but they hear the music. <laughs> and I would, instead of going into the filthy material, 
I would go into my impressions that I used to do, like Travolta and Stallone and Pacino and all the all the people I would do. And then I back up into the act a little but not get too filthy and then end with the poems. And I get a standing ovation at the Chinese theater and they don't even know who the hell I am. And then it gets written up, written up in the uh, in the L.A. Uh, Daily News or the Herald Kamikaze comic, Andrew Dice Clay. A news guy saw me. Yeah. You know, so I would hit the theaters. I would hit diners. You know, I was going to hit big audiences, whatever it took. You That's know. like it's it's pre-internet. You know, you're almost, you know, like how today you just see everything on your phone. You're seeing stuff constantly. Uh -huh. You were like doing that in the real world. Yeah, just like I, wherever know. I could subconsciously get into people's heads, you were, you were just showing up. Yeah. yeah, because I'm thinking, Max, I'm thinking movie producers go to see movies. You know what I mean? Casting people go to see movies. So if, if Mitzi was not going to be smart enough <laughs> to put me on at 1030 at night when I should be on, because I spoke to her about it one time and, and I go, why am I the last guy going up? She goes, because the other comics don't want to follow you. Because it was dirty. Mm. But I would say, but fuck them. I'm the biggest thing that's ever going to come through your doors. Like, who gives a fuck about them? You know what I mean? And But eventually, you know, we, the history was, you know, Rodney Dangerfield put me on his special in 1988. It aired February 13th, 1988, on a Saturday night. And uh, Monday morning, I was the biggest comic in the world. Yes, it was wow. like, yeah, you know, and that's why, you know, that's why I love watching them with their band Still Rebel, you know, yeah. their build, Absolutely. you know, and the way they're working on things. And maybe not so much the way I got to say how we approach the record industry, because sometimes it gets a little tense. But, you know, I'm so passionate about them when I talk to anybody about them, because you know, it's just funny. Like, whenever I go to any of the people I know in the record industry that are my friends, those are the ones that are going to hate them the most, you know, because they're my sons. But if they found them, they're going to love them. Because any stranger in the record industry that comes to see them, like um, when, I, when I finally got to, uh, which was Dylan's idea to go see, um, uh, very sad, uh, Jordan Feldstein. Oh, right. Who, who passed away, who, who managed Maroon 5, and, and I played their stuff for him. He fell in love with them, and he was making a whole plan to manage them. And obviously, I feel worse that he passed away, but he wasn't like a bosom buddy of mine. Right. You know what I mean? He just watched their stuff on the Internet. Then he met with them. They played their music, and he was forming a plan, and... You know, he passed away, which was very sad. He was, you know, great guy, great manager. But it's funny how, you know, if I would call like somebody I know, like Rick Rubin, who doesn't even get on the phone, right. he would be the first to pass on him. You know what I mean? Just because they're my sons. You know, but I always tell them, who gives a shit about these guys? Because the bottom line is they, they do have, you know, Dylan writes all their songs, whether he's mm -hmm. writing rock and roll you know, I mean, people, you know, I'll just advertise. They could see him at, at Still Rebel Band. Their, their their album is up on iTunes. And where is it? You tell them where it is. Just it's anywhere you listen to Spotify. music. Anywhere you can Spotify, find music. Spotify, yeah. iTunes, iTunes, Still Rebel Valley YouTube. Days. And I'm not going to get much into music today, but I'm just saying how hard this industry is. And I'm like, you just got to be at it every day. Who cares what anybody thinks? Because yeah. all you need is... You know, a, a lot of these big guys that are interested, like Dylan just recently got, um, what was it, Messaged? Or, uh, what was the song? Oh, tell the, this is cool. This is the song I don't even like, by the way. I like it. Tell them the story. This, this it was, sorry, let Max tell. Little. Max knows how to lay this. This, this actually isn't a Still Rebel song. This is Dylan Scott, which, you know, Dylan does his solo material. It came out under the Dylan Scott banner. And uh, you tell him who DM'd you. Yeah, I got a DM, and uh, it was from Fred Durst, who, for anyone out there, doesn't know who Fred Durst is. He's the singer of Limp Bizkit, and I'm a huge Fred Durst fan, huge Limp Bizkit fan, so he was just telling me how he dug, you know, my song Someday, and that was someday. huge for him. Like, I but, couldn't believe I was getting a message he, from him. 
Uh, he actually messaged you what he like used emojis or something, right? He yeah, was like you know, someday and then like the happy emoji. It's called a shaka, this what, hand. What, what, oh, yeah, yeah. Know, this is what's so funny about it. It's amazing. Okay. Oh, yeah. So when Dylan, no, you know, I'm honest with Dylan when he plays me a song. Sometimes I say it's a work in progress. Yeah. You know, but this particular song, I'm like listening, going, and I'm, you know, and and in the song, it's somebody say, saying like, like one day I'll be okay again, um, Daddy. Stop! You know, You're taking and, it literal. That's no, why no, it's... no, no. But but you know, from all the songs he wrote, now Max comes to me. What was the layout? Why? You put my picture wearing a Dylan shirt, like a regular picture, and why it, it would be a great song. Well, recently I started writing, you know, some solo material, and I decided to put it out under Dylan Scott when before it was all still Rebel. So this was the second song I put out. It's called Someday, and, you know, I wanted to find a really cool image to put along with the single. And so I was taking all these Polaroids, and I was taking some of Max and me, and I originally wanted it to be a picture of me but i happened to take a great polaroid of you you know in a dylan sweatshirt so it was a, a shirt from, from my mom. bar mitzvah <laughs> yeah that just says my I have name hundreds of them i made up hundreds <laughs> i think i have hundreds of them too it's yeah. amazing All right, keep going. and so it was just this great real shot of you you know i call it like an andrew shot yeah. not a dice yeah. shot right exactly. you know and honestly yeah you you weren't too into the vibe of the song and so that's why we were like, it's perfect to put the picture right. if you don't like it, because it just it adds to this whole thing that it is. And well, what did you say, Max, about with parents? Well, what, what's funny about the song is uh, both you and mom didn't really like it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know, I said to Dylan, I was like, if your parents don't like it, it's cool. <laughs> so it's going to be a hit. Because why? Because years ago, that's if your right. parents didn't like so that's what made made it cool. You yeah, know? like when you were a kid and you play music, your parents would yell, "Shut that crap off!" Number one, I don't one. want to hear that. Number so, one, so yeah, they figured right. out, like, well, if dad don't like it, you know it's good. And that was like a new thing because usually you love all the music we I, make. I love what they do. And you know. this was like a first. We played it for you, and you were just not into it. Oh yeah, my because God. I'm like, at the end of the song, you just see the person like jumping off a rowboat Stop. into the ocean. Stop it. It's a bit you of know? a melancholy song. It <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. It's like, okay, I listened to the song. I could leave her. <laughs> you know, and I like the upbeat stuff. Like, I'm right. always telling them, like, Tom Hanks in, in that movie, Who Did It? Oh, uh, that thing you do. Oh, that thing, oh, that you, thing do. you do. Yeah. You, give me it. something snappy. Not who did it? Yeah, that thing me, you do. You know, do. Tom Hanks was like, but you know, the movie took place like in the sixties or something, right. and Tom Hanks go, "We want you to record again, but we want something snappy." You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I love Hanks. You want something snappy? snappy? You know, I know he thinks there's a problem with us, but I never had a problem with him. Right. With Tom you know Hanks? I mean? Yeah. Why now, would you have I a used problem? To yell with about, him? No, because I used to yell about. And, and I think he's one of the greatest. Who doesn't honestly. like Tom Hanks? He's, he's had an incredible career. No, I don't hate him. All right. I used to get mad, you know, because, all right. So Tom Hanks, gigantic movie star. And I okay. think he won three Academy Awards in a row. You know, he won it for playing the dummy yep. in, um, in Gump, you know, walking around like, <laughs> which was one of the funniest <laughs> fucking movies ever. <laughs> You know, because, you know, if you think of t he's such Fair a great enough. actor, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, every day he's got to show up on the set and the duh, duh, you know, like a fucking dummy, <gasps> you know, that, well, that's what he was playing, you know, like, I don't want to say, oh, well, well, they already heard you. You can't whisper it. You got a camera no, in your face say. and a microphone. Nobody no, didn't hear you. Politically correct. You say dummy. Now them, you're, you're going to be politically correct? No, but it, I don't want to make fun of, you know. Okay. Look. But you said, you said he thing. was a terrific That's actor. That's number one. I you just up, said you like. No, I grew up for oh, yeah. six years living in Staten Island right next to Willowbrook. So I'm allowed to talk about retarded people because I hung out with them for years. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. And you know that. I know that. You know, like I've told you boys stories where, you know, I'd have problems with them in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, That's no, terrifying, I was by the way. playing cowboys and Indian <laughs> with, with these two retarded guys. But I didn't know they're retarded because I'm 10 and they're in their thirties, but yet everybody's got guns and shooting at each other in the woods. My father built this neighborhood in Staten Island right next to Willowbrook. So I go in the woods with my friend and hang with these retarded guys that said they owned the farm next door 
They'd even let us ride the fucking horses. So I'm not thinking that they act like 10 years old. They're men. So we're having this big shootout in the woods playing uh, cowboys and Indians. Oh, my God. And I knew I got the guy, you know, because he was out in the open. He's going, no, I got you. I go, "Uh, excuse me. I got you, you know. So he comes over and he whacks me in the face. So I go home and I tell my father. So he grabs an axe. And he grabs his bow and arrow to go after the guy. That's right. a, that's you know, what's that? After a guy, he grabbed an axe and a bow and arrow? they're retarded. They're capable of anything. But they were probably playing Indians, correct? That's why he brought those tools. Axe, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he grabbed no, the axe. No, they actually wound up stealing the bow and arrow from outside our house. So oh that was a dangerous God. situation. But what I'm saying, I'm not making fun of them. No, I know, but I just, I find that. But I grew up right next to Willowbrook. Yeah. You know, we used to play football, like, right on their, their I lawn. can't believe they'd let him out, like, playing like oh, that. Oh, no. When the bell went off, you'd hear the alarm go off, like, where they were allowed to come out. You know, and thousands of them just running out onto the field. Holy shit. It, it was crazy living there, you know. And then they'd go right back in, like. Yeah, they'd go in when the bell would sound again. It's like they were programmed to do that. So wow. That so that you're an expert Andrew? on retardation. No, you're what an I'm expert. saying is I'm not making fun of them. No, I just no, of course know not. how retarded people work. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Because I have a lot of experience hanging out with them. You know, my father would say, you can't just go into the woods and talk to men in the woods. <sighs> you know, and then I, I change gears and I would like, like, I'll never forget going on a foundation because there were foundations for homes. And they would freeze in the winter, you know, so I go down there because there was a ladder stuck in the ice. Mm -hmm. So I figured I'll go skate around like on the, on the and I go through the ice, you know, it, it was frightening, wow. you know, oh uh, it was frightening. I'm lucky it was only like three feet, four feet deep. Jeez. And I come home and my mother's like, what happened? I go, I went with Mike over to the, I didn't think it was going to break. I get redressed. I go back. I'm looking at the ice. Looking at my friend going, I'll tell you the truth. It doesn't look like it would break over here. You're not a learner. And I go back, what? You're not a learner. I'm not a learner because mm -mm. I went down again. Yeah. And I went through again. And I really got in big trouble, you know. And then, you know, my dog gets hit by a car the same fucking day. Oh, boy. So, you know, my father had to go bury the fucking dog, <laughs> you know. So I, I just wanted to kill somebody. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> All right. That's. That's a really sad story. Sad. Dylan's going to write a song about that. Yeah. Don't, Don't think? even think about it. <laughs> I didn't know that the dog happened on the same day as the... Yeah, because it started raining. And we used to just let the... It was a little poodle. It like, knew to do its business and come back. Only this time it didn't come back in great shape. <laughs> you know? And I, I always felt bad about that, you know? That's, all, that's awful. I don't mean it, the laugh, but that's terrible. It comes see, back. that's the kind of parents I had, because... That night, I wake up, there's another dog in my bed. Aww. Like, they took care of the situation, like, to make, I like make that. us feel better. That's sweet. So like, That's old school. Yeah, yeah. It's very old school. Before you could even miss the other dog, yeah, there was dogs a new are dog. Yeah, replaceable. Yeah, because we felt everybody in the neighborhood loved that dog. Its name was Peppy. You know? Is that the one that used to bite everybody? No. That was, oh, uh, that was Lucy. Oh, she, that was Lucy. the biter. Um, Ronaldo, what, what, how long we been on? Ronaldo? 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Look what we did already in 50 minutes. This is the greatest show. I love this. This is probably humongous already. You're kidding. This, it's this dice cast. Amazing. This is probably humongous. <laughs> Are we like live? Is this live? Yeah, it's live. It's, it's taped. Live? It's, no, it's, it's not every fucking live. thing you can imagine. It can't be live and taped. Shut up. Just shut really? Up. That's how you react? I talk, I'm from Brooklyn, which which if you haven't noticed. I, 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 we all know this. It says it on your out. shirt. You repeat it. Yeah. No, I repeat it because people so you in remember. Brooklyn do say shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. That's as how a, we talk. It's not taken like as an insult. Exactly. Like, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Even, you know, when, when I went out with the Tangerine Girl in Vegas. Because she showed up to my show, mm -hmm. which I couldn't believe. Eleanor came to me. She goes, you're not going to believe. You know, people that follow me on Instagram know who Tangerine Girl is, <laughs> a.k.a. Treadmill Girl. Yep. So she goes, you're not going to believe who's here, and it's Tangerine Girl. So, so we go out, and, you know, you know she, she's from where I'm from, which, you know, same neck of the woods type of thing. 
So, like, when she was, like, talking too much, I go, do me a favor. Would you just shut the fuck up already? I can't take it already. That's <laughs> no, nice. You know, but Thank she you. understands yeah. shut up because she's from where I'm from. Nobody's getting insulted. She didn't look at me and go, shut the fuck up. It's not like some L.A. dummy, you know, some L.A., you know, Valley girl. Go, okay, dude. You know, oh, she's real. Okay, dude. You know, she said, shut up to me. I took her for the best steak dinner she ever had because I'm going, we connect. Yeah. Stick with the one what brung you to the dance. Oh, boy. Right. That's what I explain to people. So Stick with the one what brung you to the dance, which means... Stick with what you grew up with. I agree. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, I got wives from all over the country, right? Like, the first one was from the mid-fucking West, which was a terrible mistake. <gasps> Never banged me better than when we were on the fucking farm, by the way. Oh. Never banged me better. I told you. Like, where she... Long time. Yeah. When I used to bang... Boys, you'll love this. Okay. When I used to bang this girl in L.A., she would bang... You know, like if we had to do the number system, one to ten, she was a five, six on a good day. But when we went to visit her family, listen to me. I'll never forget. Because it was a little farmhouse on acres and acres, right? Mm -hmm. So I stayed in the crazy brother's room that only had a sliding brown and pla like a plaid looking magnet door and the brother would sleep in the barn with all these cats he let me have his room i'm not even kidding it was a real farm like <laughs> years later paulie Shaw did a movie that was similar to what i was living the where he's on that farm so i'm in the room with her and right next to the room is one step up and you're in the parents bedroom it's a little upstairs and she comes sneaking in there, and the way she would bang in there was like a seasoned fucking pro from the moves, from the angles. She could twist her legs this way, that way, the other fucking way, any which way but loose, right? <laughs> Using language that I didn't even use on fucking stage. Now that's... That's how good she would bang. And in my mind, it's like, oh, she wants to get back at the parents. Wow. That's what it was. I couldn't even believe it because when we got back to L.A., she went back to a five. That's so weird. She was at ten and a half on the farm. Everywhere we could bang in the farm, in the weeds, in the fucking barn, near this fucking cow that I kept saying, look the other way or I'm going to smack you. To the cow? Yeah, because I don't even like when a dog watches. Yeah, especially me. Like, a cow. I don't need a yeah. cow looking at me. <laughs> All of a sudden, the, the milk will start shooting. I don't want that. That's exciting. She would look to bang me anywhere on that farm. But the minute we got back, she went back to like the L.A. bang. Yeah. The be happy I'm banging you bang. Oh. Yeah, it's like she I was... Know. She was getting off because her yep. parents or family were right there. Yeah. And like one of one of her other brothers who, you know, owned like a like a church store. No. You know, where they sold like, you know, you know, all the pictures of like uh biblical characters and animals, you know. Right? You know yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. You know, they sold uh you know, every kind of Bible you could get, you know crucifixes. Things like yeah. that, statues, And even saints. the mother would go, why'd you open up a Bible store there? There's nobody over there. Like, we went to the Bible store one day to hang out, which was a blast. <laughs> yeah. you know? Sounds amazing. For, yeah, and uh, there's nothing around the Bible. I mean, it's just acres and acres of nobody. <gasps> the streets, not one car coming down. I was going out of my mind that I actually took the other brothers, his weights. He had, like, rusted out weights that I took time to shine it all up. So I'd have something to do to keep my sanity. And once a day, I would call my agent just to hear like a normal human being. Oh, my God. Because I know an hour from then, there's her mother in front of the TV with a giant beehive, you know, this fucking big with the popcorn watching Johnny Carson. No. And I'm going, this can't be what's happening in my life. You know, because they live like hours and hours into the, from the airport. It wasn't like a 15-minute ride to the airport. It was, you know, it was surreal. It was, I didn't even know what was going on. And I hung out with this fucking Indian that was married to her, her other sister, you know, 
And the Indian was cool. The Indian saved my ass one night, you know, because we went to a pig roast. Oh, my God. Okay. What kind of Indian? Like Indian? It was Cherokee. It's Cherokee. That kind. Real deal. Okay. Okay. So dot. And, you know, he was like an Indian. uh, He was married to her other sister, and he would take off for like three days at a clip and just get drunk and never come home. Oh, my God. um, But he liked me. So he came to the pig roast, right? So you got to understand, uh, Jews in Iowa were not that popular. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the middle of Iowa. You might have been nothing. the one. Yeah. You might have been the only one. Yeah. I was the only one. I would wear like, it was funny. I'd wear like a cut off jean vest with the collar up. And I was dice, you know, yeah. you know, with the cigarettes, you know, and I'm trying to be cool with these guys. And they circle me at the pig roast. They're all fucking drunk. Real fucking farmers, these guys. Right. And I'm going, all right, this is going to be a problem. And it's a problem that I'm not walking away from so easy (laughs) Yeah, because they were drunk and they just hated me from seeing me. So and I'm not even kidding about this. This this Indian guy was like Billy Jack. It was amazing. All of a sudden he goes over to the toughest one, the one that was really fucking with me. And he takes out one of those knives that you see in the movies. Yeah. And go, How do they do? Oh, like a right in front blade. of the guy's face. And he fucking grabs. He goes, you want to fuck with my friend? You're fucking with me. <gasps> nice. You know, and he wanted to kill him. The Indian actually wanted to kill him, which I would have found interesting because it was a party <laughs> and everybody's drinking and eating pig, you know, oh, and he gross. saved my ass. And after that, we just hung out together. I knew I found a friend. And one night, I don't know why we were running through the fields, but we came across like this giant fence that going over it, it had some barbed wire that I ripped open my <laughs> ankle. Okay. And we get back to my house and her whole family is laughing, you know, going, you really want to go to hospital to stitch that up? Oh, that's a scratch. <laughs> and I'm seeing the guts of my leg coming out oh. and they just like wrapped it. There was no hospital run. There was a. They dragged me across a lake, Max. Still, you wouldn't even believe. I'm not. Do I look like a water ski guy? <laughs> do I look like I grew up doing water skiing tricks? Did you? Okay. Have fingerless okay. gloves on. Now, now, huh? did I have my fingerless? Uh, I don't even know. Maybe. I just. I'm just. Could seeing you imagine? That, like... So they take me to the lake. Now, the one I called Jethro, the bro- brother that looked that was all built out, that slept with the cats. Just wore the Levi's with no shirt and for whatever reasons had muscles like Tarzan, you know, and her other brother was like 600 pounds. It was amazing. So he's sitting on a rock, this guy. And so the girls go first, her and her sister, and the father's got a boat and they're doing all these, they're flipping. They're actually flipping and going over things and jumping and sk- <laughs> like that amazed me with, with my girlfriend. Like I couldn't believe she could do that. Now it's my turn. Now it's the Jews' turn. Oh, my God. From Brooklyn, right? So they make you stand on the land, and I got the thing, and the father's like, you ready? (laughs) Are you ready? (laughs) Could you see the hate in his face? I'm going, yeah. Like, I'm figuring how hard could it be? So they take off, and I'm on my feet, and I I, I lasted a good, you know, five, six seconds before I went face down, but I didn't let go. Of the thing you got to hold on to, the rope, whatever. And the father just keeps going at full steam, and I'm bouncing oh on the water. God, holy shit. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And, and and now they pull me into the boat, and I see the brother on the rock laughing his ass off and chewing something, which I don't know what it was to this day. <laughs> Toenails, probably. I don't Ugh. know what he was chewing, but it didn't look right. Ugh. And um, And I spent two weeks... Two weeks in Iowa. Anyway. Did you marry her after that? Yeah. That's crazy. We can talk about the marriage and everything. I'm just saying, that's crazy. And the crazy. divorce and the lawsuit. No, no, you don't you have know, to. On another, on another podcast. I got, I got a ton of stories. I, got, I know you do. I got a whole right. career to talk. This is almost like, oh, my God. You know what I just figured out? Oh, boy. Patrick, this is almost like documentary. Reality Ooh. dice cast. Just yeah. add it all in. Whatever you want to do. It's unbelievable. It's everything. It You're really an inventor. Is unbelievable. Um. Uh, you know what we'll do to end the show? I wasn't gonna do this, 
But Patrick, all right, here's the scenario. You're going to play one of their songs on the radio, whatever you got over there. Mm -hmm. And as, you, as you're doing it, see, I don't even want to fake this shit. As you're doing it, you film us all so people get to know who we are. So what song would you want to hear of Valley Days? That you can be closer. 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 Yeah. closer. I think it's track closer. two. It's track two. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll be done in a few minutes and, you know, have a, a great show coming up after this. All right. Exciting. All right. So as you film and get creative with the camera, go ahead. Closer from Still Rebel up on iTunes. Valley Days. been a great crowd see you on our next episode i'm over here now